Hello everybody, welcome back to Horizon Zero Dawn. Last episode, we met up with Silence, kind of, and he took us all the way down here to this edge of the map. We had an interesting battle, but after we prevailed, we found out we have to go to Sunfall. So we are just a little bit ways away. Let's make our way down there. Hello, buddy. So let's see what's down here. Sunfall. The Mad King drowned Summer Palace. A bulwark of Karja might against the Howling Forbidden West. Thanks for the history lesson. But they have no idea what lies beneath. We will learn much from this Aloy. Yeah, I hope so. More than That's what, what we've learned before. This place is massive. Hello. Do you have anything new? Uh, no, nothing really. You might have some new. Nope, nothing. Alright. It is an arena. And that's a behemoth? Yeah, that's a... That's a behemoth. The sun. Bounties, huh? Can we do bounties? I'll take the shards. Zero Dawn Project facility. I hear the shadow turns. By the glory of the sun revealed. Behold, Radiant Edaman, the one true Sun King. The light in shadow, whose will is light and whose light is law. But as a child, I command Lucian Bahavas to speak in my behalf. As a child, by the will of Radiant Edaman, does the sun glare down mercilessly upon the traitor Uthid. To the hunter who brings his head to us shall go a bounty of 500 shards. More prisoners than royalty, don't you think? Hmm. Love your hair. Right? You and I need to chat, little huntress. The green tent down in Shadowside? I'll be waiting. Kind of busy. We both know you're no killer for hire. Uthid was innocent. Is that my problem? So come see me. While there's still time to save him. Why is that my problem all of a sudden? So, the way in I spoke of is right behind you. You've got to be kidding. Not at all. And you needn't worry about the Kestrels. They'll be too busy acting important to pay attention to you. First time in the Citadel, gotta see the sun ring from on high. Well, the Kestrels. Ah, what is okay? Quite an impression. Okay, I thought this was like one huge like snap jaw, like that looked like a spine to me. Can I see what's going on? Ah, oh, nothing's going on. Be great if there was like constant ba move. <laughs> Be great if there was like constant battles going on. Okay, Aloy. What are you doing? The other side oh. of the tower. Look for a vent. Um was that supposed to happen? <laughs> okay. I see you've been here before. Obviously. No. It's very important that you hear what I'm about. 
lot to say. Yeah? I've shown you the way in, but this humble vet marks a point of no return. Before you descend to the depths here, you should be fully committed, equipped, and focused. I'm ready. No distractions. If you have errands to run, do them first or hold your peace. I won't tolerate whining. Is that clear? You'll tolerate what I give you, Silence. I didn't ask you along for the ride. Do I actually have to do anything? I don't think so. I've done all the cauldrons. Errand, I'm not really going to worry about. All the tall necks are done. I think I'm good. Should I do errand? I mean... Ancient armory? Nah. The shield weaver, I don't need, need to worry about. Let's go. I'm heading down. I've spent a lifetime trying to uncover the secrets of this world. Where the machines came from. How the old ones achieved such marvels only to fall into silence and death. A lifetime of failure. As year by year, decade after decade, I hit walls I could not break, doors I could never breach. Hello. Until Honora Huntress marched out of the savage east. And, voila, for her, all the deepest secrets of the earth were laid bare. I suspect you will have an easier time with this door than I did years ago. Hold for identiscan. Genetic profile confirmed. Entry authorized. Malfunction. Let's go. Malfunction. Oh, what? Malfunction. Malfunction. Are you, me? you don't hear me laughing. Shut up. There's gotta be another way. Hey! Elizabeth Sobek here! Requesting access! Access request acknowledged. Root command functions available. Do you wish to proceed? I do! Get me through this door! Analyzing. Primary access inoperable due to mechanical failure. Emergency venting procedure likely to circumvent blockage. Do you wish to proceed? Yes. Yes. Emergency venting authorized. Let's go. Oh boy. Guess you can't have everything. That will draw attention. We won't have this place to ourselves for long now. We? Last I checked, I was the one risking my life down here. Yes, fine. Now will you please get moving? There's so much to learn in less time than I'd hoped. Alright, silence. Whatever you say. Welcome to Project Zero Dawn. Zero Dawn. We found it. Are you really so surprised? Facility diagnostics detect multiple failures. Attempting repair. So, what was this room? An entrance hall, perhaps. Please take a seat and wait for your name to be called. A selection of beverages and snacks are available. In a smaller room. Oh boy, we actually made it here. Please proceed into viewing room one for an important message regarding the purpose of your visit. All right. What? What was this place? A holographic theater. CB01 data intact. Initiating playback. <gasps> Are we gonna find out? Welcome to Project Zero Dawn. I am General Harris, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the United States of America. I'm sure you've heard the rumors that Zero Dawn is a top-secret super-weapons program, the technological miracle that will save us from the Pharaoh Plague, if Operation Enduring Victory can hold off the robots long enough. The reason I'm sure you've heard the rumors is that I'm the one who spread them. 
they are all lies. Zero Dawn is not a super weapons program, and it will not save us. Nothing will save us. Here's why. By the time the glitch was noticed, it was already too late. Nothing could stop the Pharaoh Plague. Nothing can. Its robots will continue to replicate and devour the biosphere. Life on Earth will be destroyed. Our planet reduced to a barren sphere. Global extinction is inevitable. No matter how many we kill, the robots just keep exponentially making more. If we had their deactivation codes, we could shut them all down. The entire swarm. But since their cryptographic protocols use polyphasic entangled waveforms, cracking a code set would take half a century. At best, we've got 16 months. Not exactly what you'd call a survival option. The destruction of a biosphere is not the sort of apocalypse you can wait out in a fallout shelter or a space station. There will be no Earth left to reclaim. Just a lifeless, toxic rock with several million pharaoh robots on it, hibernating, waiting for something to eat. This is the horrible truth behind the lies of Operation Enduring Victory. My lies, lies designed to inspire millions of innocents to sacrifice themselves in battle. Why? One reason. To buy time for you and the work you will do here. Zero day. The day that life on Earth ceases to exist is coming fast. It cannot be stopped. The hope of Zero Dawn is that something new might come after. But I will leave it to Elizabeth Sobek to shine that thin ray of light into the darkness. Harris, out. It was all a lie. That doesn't make sense. Life on Earth didn't cease to exist. He said it could not be stopped. But it was. Somehow, somehow Elizabeth saved us. I've, I've got to keep looking. Find out how she did it. So it seemed like the Metal Devil, the Horus robot, that's on the top of that mountain, that's the thing that kept producing all those robots. Because of that machine, the Pharaoh Plague kept going. And because it kept producing the robots that a biomass is fuel, basically like plants and trees, it couldn't be stopped because it kept producing those robots no matter what. And somehow it got shut down. And I think that's what we're, what, uh, we're going to find out pretty soon. They got in. Through the vents. Let nothing stop you from learning the truth. Spread out! If it moves, kill it! What is this place? Tomb? All right, Aloy. Get out of here. We're too close to the tribal print to stop us now. The data ports, what did they contain? Another playback. Elizabeth Sobeck. Are we gonna finally learn what happened? You've heard the bad news, and it's all true. The Pharaoh Plague is devouring the biosphere. Life itself will cease to exist. 
But does that have to be the end? What if we could give life a future? What if we could build a kind of seed from which, on a dead planet, life could blossom anew? This is the aim, the hope, of Project Zero Dawn. To create a super-intelligent, fully automated terraforming system and bring life back from lifelessness. What would such a system require? At its core, it would need a true AI, fully capable of making the trillions of decisions necessary to reconstitute the biosphere. An immortal guardian, devoted to the reflourishing of life. We call it Gaia. Gaia? Mother Nature as an AI. But that's just the core of the system. She will need to be surrounded and empowered by a comprehensive suite of subordinate functions. Think of them as extensions this is genius. of mind, each dedicated to a specific purpose. Apollo? Now these aren't AIs, but make no Poseidon? mistake, each presents an engineering challenge more profound than anything the human species has ever before attempted. Hardware that preserves and then gestates the billions of seeds and embryos from which life will be reborn. The construction of underground facilities to hold it all. And that's Hephaestus. just the start. We don't have to build the entire system. The beauty of a fully automated terraforming system is that it can build itself. Now over the days to come, you'll learn how all these functions, all these pieces that you'll be working on, fit together. How we'll race the clock to execute our harvest initiatives, write the software, build the tech and the facilities. How we'll lock it down and seal it up before the inevitable occurs. But even more important, you'll know how it doesn't end here. How Gaia will generate those deactivation codes General Harris talked about. And build the transmission arrays to broadcast them. That's the huge tower. down the feral robots for good. How Gaia will not just build, but imagine any conceivable robot it needs to do its work across centuries. Grazer. From detoxifying the Earth's ravaged atmosphere and poisonous seeds. Oh my god. To the regreening of the Earth from cryopreserved seed stocks. To rewilding the Earth with animal life. And then, when all that is done, how a new generation of human beings spawned at cradle facilities around the globe will partake of Apollo. The vast archive of human knowledge and cultural achievement from which they will learn of us, our world, and most important, how not to repeat our mistakes. It's not an impossible dream. It is within our grasp if we work tirelessly and stop at nothing to achieve it. We can't stop life from ending. But if you will help me, help Gaia. We can give it a future. Join me and help make that future real. Brilliant! The whole earth destroyed, but then remade? Yes. By a machine. A machine of creation. Did this for life, for us? But why Hades then? If it was part of Gaia, how did it end up in the wreckage of a feral robot? Why does it want to kill me? And Apollo, the archive of knowledge. What happened to that? I'm as confused as you are. That's right. Maybe the answers lie ahead. Intruder! Get her! That looks like we're Whatever you do, don't die now. So something happened to Apollo because if we if Apollo were correctly, what would it that if Apollo were correctly, we would have known about all of this. Full already. Now, those lame FBI black cats and Mockingbird back in the day, I enjoyed schooling them. Down. 
but maybe I went too hard on this. I've done this before. Just be my focus. Right, I need to open the door. Can these guys get out of the way? It's another door. Here we go. All right. Place. Need to find the right configuration. Left up, left down, right. Done. I should check the door nearby. Hey, I'm done with Brett's incompetence, okay? Somehow, he managed to install an H emitter node back. So, I can't I mess with... All oh, right, I have to go get that. No, I still cannot get that door. I can go through this door. Cool. So that's down, left, down, left, up, right, down. Is that right? So that's down, left. Up. Okay, that's supposed to be right, and then that's okay. That did it. Here we go. Door should have power. Now to see what lies beyond it. Give me that imp. Okay, how'd you get in? Eclipse, they're here. Avoid contact. Lines look good. Gaia. It's up there. Second floor. Can you reach it? So much for avoiding contact. Okay, music. <laughs> you off, this is going to be the subordinate function that Gaia will use to make lots and lots of robots. Her personal forge. Except, it's not that simple. Um, so like, you probably noticed that only about a third of you are robotics engineers. The rest, experts in machine cognition, virtual heuristics, that stuff. 
Well, that's because we aren't going to be the ones designing and building robots. The last thing we want is to burden Guy with a bunch of outmoded 21st century designs. A waste of time. Our purpose is to empower Gaia to build the robots. And not just build, imagine, from scratch. Any robot she needs for any conceivable purpose, designed and fabricated at a snap of a finger. Hers. Her finger. So, Hephaestus isn't really the forge. It's more like the knowledge of craft and ingenuity of a master smith to wield the hammer. Encoded as software. Virtual creativity made real. Guy's already learning. In simulation, she's doing some very creative things with fractal assembly and animal morphologies. Her designs aren't about to win the Liam Prize anytime soon, but hey, everyone has to start somewhere. So, yes, time to get started. Let's do this. I don't get it. Which part? It's a little technical with places. If Gaia was designed to save life, why would the robots it makes attack people? Perhaps it loves some forms of life more than others. The derangement. The machines weren't always so angry. Truly. Mostly they were docile until 10, 15 years ago. For years, Hephaestus has been forcing cauldrons to make aggressive machines. I've seen it myself, in the cauldrons. The stalkers, ravagers, the thunderjaw. How could it do that? And why? Why indeed? Oh man, Hephaestus makes the bad robots when originally there weren't any bad robots. I think this is it. Elizabeth Sobek's office. But more Eclipse. Careful now. Alright, that's all there is. Just sneak on by. Welcome to Apollo. The collective memory of the human species and the wellspring of knowledge for future generations. I am Samina Ebaji. Until recently, I was director of the International Collective Memory Institute in New Tehran. As a heritage professional, I devoted my career to the preservation of human knowledge, creative endeavor, and cultural achievement. Apollo is, therefore, the ultimate embodiment of a lifelong passion, albeit under the very worst circumstances imaginable. The challenges before us are immense. Specifically, we will have to design and implement four major initiatives simultaneously. First, the construction of data repositories in cradle facilities around the world ensuring redundancy. Second, the collection and processing of a projected 180 million discrete data entries. 42 zettabytes of data in Mandarin, English, Spanish, and Arabic. Third, the transfer and encoding of all that data onto DNA encapsulated in synthetic fossils. The only medium capacious and durable enough to safeguard it without degradation for the centuries to come. And last, but not least, the development of the holographic interface and gamified curricula by which future humans will commune with Apollo, progressively unlocking heuristic learning modules, leveling up their knowledge and skills they will need to take control of the terraforming system. That is the future towards which all of our efforts will be directed. Not just the preservation of the past, but the seed for the flourishing of a new tree of knowledge. Welcome, and let us begin. Insane. Let's 
So what happened to Apollo? Get out of here. In what should have been a cave of wonders. Look around. See if anything is left. This looks like the cradle. reference to all mentions of my name and Operation Enduring Victory. My name is General Aaron Harris. From 2060 to 2066, I served as the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the highest rank officer of the United States Armed Forces. The tenure of my command included strategic planning and oversight of Operation Enduring Victory, a falsehood perpetrated on the civilian populations of the United States during the last 14 months of life on this planet. Before the Pharaoh Plague, I did my job and did it well. I was bold and decisive, crafty in political maneuvers. It wasn't an accident that I rose to my position and became the commander of the largest mechanized force ever assembled. But to what end? My only lasting achievement was the extinction of life on Earth and my one redeeming act, if any was to delay that extinction by days or weeks, by throwing more death at it. It is my hope that there will be no need for men like me in the world to come. If you are one of the people of that future world listening to this message, please note that I am sorry and that I wish you well. Sincerely, Aaron Harris. Welcome. Hades. Hades. Zero Dawn's extinction failsafe protocol. The ultimate killer app. Now, I know what you're thinking. The purpose of Gaia is to resurrect life. So why give her a subordinate function, only purpose of which is to wipe out life all over again? I mean, what the... what? Just bum crazy, ain't it? Well, no, it isn't. Reconstituting a biosphere? That's a tall order. Tech smart as Gaia may be, odds are she won't get it right the first time. I mean, imagine you're Gaia 200 years from now and this new biosphere growing, it's all gone wrong. Alkalines are skyrocketing, coniferous forests eroding under the lash of superstorms that would have drowned Noah. It's chaos, spinning top that won't stop wobbling. Now, what are you gonna do? Release phase one organisms into that hot mess? Hope their CO2 and methane can balance out what you got started? Hell no. What you're gonna do, Gaia, is step aside while Hades takes over and does what you're just too darn nurturing and life-loving to do. Which is burn that misbegotten mess of a biosphere to the ground so Gaia can start over. Okay, not burn, more like reverse terraforming operations and suffocate it. But... You get the idea. Hades takes the biosphere back to zero. Square one, blank slate. And then, only then, does it hand the steering wheel back to Gaia and say, try again, old girl. And better this time, or we'll have to do this again. That's Hades. It's pretty badass when you think about it. Extinction on demand. Death on speed dial. All for the greater good, of course, but still, kind of metal. <laughs> so welcome to Hades. 
Welcome to the Void. Okay, so... If that's the original purpose of Hades, why does it want me extinct? We need more data. And how does it end up in the wreckage of a Pharaoh Titan, getting worshipped by the Eclipse like some kind of god? Looks like the only way onwards. And it's crazy. What is this place? Welcome to Eleuthia, the crown and king of Gaia's subordinate functions. For it is by Eleuthia that the human race will continue to exist. Oh, I am Patrick oh, Porchard Klein, oh, the Alpha in charge of this program. Now let one thing be perfectly clear from the outset. Eleuthia is not okay, a genetic that... engineering project. Our goal is to preserve the human genome, not alter it. A snapshot of human genetic diversity, literally frozen in time. The genetic quintessence of our species, Not too much already. unmodified. My watch, our and Cradles, this is where people were made. The 2034 clone provisions and the 2048 rally accords. Now that may seem a quaint, even trivial concern to you in light of present circumstances, but as one of the authors of the accords, it is far from trivial to me. The practical challenges before us are staggering in scope and complexity, but not insurmountable. Global collation and provisional storage of zygotes, perfection of exogenic technologies, design and perfection of servitors to provide nurture and inculcation during early child development. All of these program components must and will proceed in tandem. Okay, honestly, I'm kind of tired of this guy talking. Let's just move on. Facilities. Um, the what? Said, uh, okay. <laughs> I thought I got stuck right there. If humans would be spawned inside such places. She did. Oh, Mother Mountain. It was one of them? There's only one way to be sure. The hatch wouldn't open. Something, something about a corrupted alpha registry. I need to search Elizabeth's office. Is this it? from antilopony morphologies, like though Capricorn show superior load-bearing capability. You're a quick study, Gaia. Dr. Sobek, as I have conducted this comparative analysis of mammalian morphologies, I've gathered extensive data on the Quaternary Extinction event. Oh? And your assessment? Gaia? Logically speaking, the extinction was a natural consequence. And yet... And yet, I find the loss of megafaunal species unaccountably sad. That they passed forever into oblivion causes me to experience a grief that is difficult to describe. Am I not functioning? <sighs> no, no, Gaia, you're not. This is good. It's very good. You will undergo a brief period of unconsciousness during relocation to Prime and final instatement. Elizabeth, may I speak outside protocol? When you're back up and running at the new site, we'll bring the subordinate functions online and see where we stand. Elizabeth, I detect distress. Are you alright? I'm fine. I realize that circumstances compel us to launch earlier than we hoped, but all subsystems are operational. The odds stand in our favor. But what if... Guy, there's nothing left out there. You can't even survive unless you're wearing an environmental suit. There are billions dead. In fear and agony. What if... What if it was all for nothing? Elizabeth, extinction was inevitable. Thanks to you, life will have a future. You really believe that? I believe in you, Elizabeth. 
in you all things. What? Odyssey has failed. What? Okay. Far Zenith has informed me that the Odyssey mission has failed. So this is the launch, the orbital launch thing they were talking about. I'm guessing it was called Odyssey. Tele telemetry indicated a catastrophic antimatter containment failure as the drive spun out to depart the solar system. Yeah, so the the orbiter orbital launch the ship, its crew, its cargo of zygots and seeds, its alpha build of Apollo all were lost. Zero Dawn is now the only able to continuation of human species on earthly life. So Apollo was meant to go in space with the ship, a crew, a bunch of zygots and seeds and I guess launch back down to earth after Gaia did her thing but it got destroyed so Apollo and all the information was never recovered okay that's that's not good that's a big crate should have brought a cart Artemis. Let's see what we got here. The Alpha Registry Master File. Intact? Yeah. No signs of corruption. Then what are you waiting for? Copy the file. With this, I can restore the registry at the hatch inside All Mother. Open it. Go inside. And grasp the secrets within. Where I was born. Maybe. Maybe who gave birth to me. Who? Are you really so naive? There will be no who waiting for you there, Aloy. Whatever birthed you into the world was a what, not a who. You bastard. Oh, no, I had a legitimate birth. It's you, Aloy, who are the creation of a machine. But what kind of machine and why? Why were you created? Eclipse. You need to get out of there. What you found is too valuable. You're too valuable. Should have destroyed the armor. to destroy that armor. Still alive. Good. I have a more suitable death in mind for you, child. The life. arena. I've always known one thing with prophetic certainty that I was destined for glory as a great champion of the sun. Even when Joran was murdered, even when Meridian fell, I never doubted my destiny. Until you came along. When I heard that you had survived, a doubt took root in my mind. As sure as the sun rises and falls each day, those I am bade to kill die. And yet I failed. How? Why? With each dig site you attacked, 
Each loyal soldier you killed, this pestering doubt grew. I kept thinking of the moment my knife pierced your throat. One twist, a simple tug of the blade, and you would have bled out. In slaughter, I am a practiced hand. So why hesitate? Why fail my destined purpose? If you're gonna go on babbling like this all night, could you just kill me now? Oh no. We're in no hurry, you and I. Not now. Maybe some physical torture to distract me from your voice? At that moment, on the mountain, I aimed to kill you. I don't know, dispatch, dude. And you did not. Why? I don't know, that's your problem. This failing troubled my thoughts. Haunted every step. It was only when I captured you down in that place that I finally glimpsed the sun's design etched at length across the course of events. You were meant to survive that day on the mountain. Meant to interfere at dig sites and kill my men. Conversely, I was meant to capture you. Here. So that you might die as a sacrificial offering to the sun. Yeah, sure. Whatever you say. It's gonna happen. As it was meant to be. Predestined and preordained. Some destiny. You're following orders, not some grand cosmic design. You're a puppet, with Hades yanking the strings. A pawn pushed around by larger forces. It'd be laughable if there weren't so much killing involved. Hades is an ancient machine, not the buried shadow of Karja myth. It doesn't care about Meridian. It wants to kill everything and everyone. And you are its dutiful slave. I serve not the buried shadow, but the sun in shadow. All halves of nature joined to one cause. Shadow to sun, dark to light. Do you really not hear how ridiculous that sounds? You've gone from serving an insane homicidal sun king to an insane homicidal machine. You're moving down in the world, not up. I'll remember those words as I watch your corpse burn. Whatever's left of it. You fail to grasp the point. As surely as you've been conquered, so has all doubt. And with certainty of belief comes unstoppable force. Then you can cage and put your faith to the test. See if things work out like you expect. The circle has closed. Every element is in its proper place. Okay, let me go. Exactly where it belongs. The errant beast, now caged, will serve her true purpose. A sacrificial animal. Oh, speaking of sacrifice, I forgot to tell you. After you crashed the Eclipse Network, I sent messengers into the East to rally the forces there and mount an invasion of the sacred land. I ordered every Nora killed. I was hoping to catch you there, but alas, it all seems to have been unnecessary. Uh, yeah. The Nora have no part to play in this. Leave them alone. Soon, they'll have no part to play in anything. That much is sure. In any case, I couldn't recall the order even if I wished to. Thanks to your destruction of the network, communication over distances is impossible. You not only doomed yourself, but an entire tribe. Do we not see the scorching judgment of the sun in these events? Well, it's just your sun. focus. Such a powerful device, isn't it? And yet. So fragile.
judge a faithful. Rejoice! Our years in shadow are over. A new dawn trembles on the horizon. A new day soon to break. And when it does, the false Sun King will be dead. And Holy Meridian ours once more. In this, I have become an instrument of prophecy. All halves of nature join to one cause. Shadow to sun, light to dark, night to day. Behold! Ah, oh, boy. Hold your seats! Can you not see the proof of the sun's blessing before your eyes? How else could shadows such as these prowl in broad light of day? Were they not approved by the sun and joined to our cause? Many years ago, to consecrate this great ring, the Radiant Juron ordered many faithless crushed beneath the hooves of the behemoth. Mighty is the behemoth in the eye of the sun, but it is mightier still in beauty the power of shadows. Let this one, who schemed and slithered, be the first to die! Let her be the first of thousands! Alrighty, what am I supposed to do? I ain't got nothing on me. I got my fist. That can't really do much. My weapons are up on the platform. There's no way out of this way. Maybe I could use its strength against it. That pillar's weak. Another hit, and that pillar will come down. Come on. Uh, I wasn't supposed to take a behemoth charge either. Does it have my stuff? My stuff. Let's go. Go on, Aloy. Come on, I killed a behemoth, you guys can't I can't take these two. Go on. He knows silence. Uh, 
<sighs> Silence to the rescue! Interesting. Silence is a traitor. Well, finally nice to meet so you're you. Here. Really here. You risked your life. Of course I did. If you'd been killed, the Nora Sacred Mountain would never have given up its secrets. Too bad you wasted your time, then. Helis destroyed my focus. And the Alpha Registry with it. Not at all. The whole time I've been monitoring your focus, I've duplicated every data file you scanned. Installing that data to a new focus was trivially easy. Happy birthday, Isaac. Daddy sure is his little big man. You're really good at making it impossible to like you, Silence. But I guess I need this. It's time to see where you were born. Maybe you'll even learn why. Yeah. Meet the machine that birthed me into this world. Isn't Ooh, that how you put it? Long. I'll be off. Wait. Yes? Helis recognized you back in the Sunring. You told me that you'd assisted the Eclipse. Not that you knew the man who killed my... Who almost killed me. So now you know. The man is a serious threat. So let's do all we can to make sure that he and Hades don't succeed. Right. Uh, I'm guessing you just saw them focus. How did you track my location when I wasn't wearing a focus? Really, Aloy. It doesn't take a genius to surmise that Helis would throw you into the sun ring at high noon. I wore out two striders getting here in time, but I did. Now be on your way. Since when can you override machines? Ever since you discovered the technique. I had to destroy a corruptor to obtain the necessary parts, of course. But your example showed me how to do that as well. Yet another benefit of so monitoring he's your activity learning through everything the I know. Truth be told, the underlying logic of the technique isn't so different from rites practiced by Banuk shamans. Though, of course, far more advanced. Great. You're welcome, I guess. I'll be on my way. To make matters worse, Helis ordered an Eclipse detachment to attack the Nora Sacred Land. The tribe's already weak. They won't stand a chance. You should come with me. Well, absolutely not. I have preparations to make elsewhere. What kind of... Why do I bother asking? You're not gonna tell me. When the time is right, I'll be in touch. I'll contact you later. In the meantime, should you need to return to Shadow Carja territory, I brought armor to conceal your identity. You think of everything, don't you? One of us has to. Aloy, when you were recovering the Alpha Registry down in the Zero Dawn bunker, I was needlessly cruel. For your sake, I hope there is someone waiting there for you inside the mountain. Not a what, but a who. Nah. Uh, not sure about that. Yeah! Alright, bye. See you later, silence. So what'd you give me? Really? That's what you give me? You can't even give me a blue? You can't even give me a blue. Alright. I have so many of these. I 
I have seven skill points? Let's go. What should I do next? Strong strike? Alright, so where is he telling me to go? All the way back to the beginning. All the way to All Mother. Okay, that'll be cool. Alright, so that's going to be the next episode. Hopefully you enjoyed. We're almost to the end. And after that, we'll do Frozen Wilds. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye-bye.